In here on Trunk Nation, Sirius XM Channel 39, live Mondays, 5 to 8 Eastern Time. And of course, don't forget, live every day on Faction Talk 103, 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern. Everything also, anytime you want, on the Sirius XM app. Had a chance to see Winger uh, recently in Vegas. Always get a chance to see the band. It's always good to see them and all the guys and uh, hang out with my old buddy Kip. We're going to be on the Monsters of Rock Cruise coming up very soon. Always a fun time there as well. Probably likely find Kip hanging out at the uh, casino on that cruise if you'd like to meet him. Would that be correct, Kip? Absolutely. (laughs) What do you play when you go in that (laughs) casino, man? What are you, blackjack guy? Totally. Blackjack it is. I used to be into craps, but it's just uh, I'm I'm way more into the blackjack, just piling money on numbers. Do you uh do you play do you gamble like on the road, like if you're in a city that has casinos, or do you only do it on the cruise? Never. Cruise or Vegas. I didn't get a chance to this last time in Vegas, but normally when I'm in Vegas I I throw down. But I I've never like lately I've never been in Vegas long enough to do anything. Well, we you were there making. You, yeah, well, you were just there because you guys played the Westgate with Lita Ford, and I was there, and I and I got to see you and and got to intro you. So thanks. And uh, then you had a couple extra days there, but you were busy making videos, right? Yeah, we made a couple videos. We're we're um, we're six videos into this uh, into this album, so there's a lot more coming down the pike. Well, let's talk about that. We're going to play, uh, before we you know, let you go, we're, we're going to end by playing the brand new song, Proud Desperado. But it's been a while since there's been a new Winger record, and you released a single and video from it, uh, I guess, about a week ago. And that is for, uh, what is the, it's the title track, right? Is the album called Proud Desperado? No, it's it's called Seven. So we released that on Friday, and we and by the way, thanks everybody for the love. We're getting a lot of hits on YouTube. If you haven't checked it out, go check it out. Um, but yeah, it's doing we're it's doing great. So um, that came out Friday, and um, you know we're very excited about a lot of great reaction on there on the comments and stuff. Yeah, well, it's a rocking song. I mean, it's got a great riff, and it's got it's a it's a really catchy song as well. It's got a lot of like harder edge to it. That's one of the things I picked up from a lot of people. Like, wow, this is really like kind of crunchy and rocking. What was the origins of that song, uh, Kip? How long ago did you write it? When when did that come together? So this record would have been out a lot earlier had COVID not hit. I'm sure that's the same scenario for everybody. You know. Um, we started about six months before COVID really got a grip on the world. And uh, that stalled everything immensely as it did for everybody else. So, um, and that Proud Desperado was one of the first tracks, probably maybe second or third track we really like cracked open. I had, um, and we wrote like the whole thing. I had all the melodies, all the music and everything, but I was, I was stumped on the words. We wrote some more songs. We, had, we were five or six songs into it, and I ran into Desmond Child at a rock and roll fantasy camp uh, master class he was doing. I was like, dude, help me with this tune, you know, because I'd never written with him before, but we've been friends, but I'd never written with him. And he was like, yeah, sure thing. So we, 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 we got together and, and knocked that out. And, and uh, man, I'll tell you, Desmond Child is Desmond Child for a reason. It was really, He came with some really cool words for that. And, uh, and so... Um, I finally finished the recording um, quite a while ago. It took a while to mix. We went through we went through a round of mixing. I wasn't happy with it. We did a second round of mixing and finally got it. Same guy that mastered our first three records, Ted Jensen, mastered it. Um, Ted did Hotel California and, and a lot of stuff in between. He did our first three albums. And uh, we went back to the original logo, so there's a lot of stuff that's that's uh, reminiscent about of the first era of the band. When you talk about working with a guy like Desmond Child, for people in the audience that don't know, Desmond is one of the most successful songwriters and had a huge, huge impact on the 80s, working with everyone from Aerosmith to Bon Jovi and on and on and on and in the pop world as well. Tell, tell me about your relationship with him. When did you first meet him? I know you live in... 
the Nashville area. I know he relocated there. When did you guys first uh, first get to know each other? You said you've been friends for a while. First time I met Desmond, I went in to sing on the Trash album for Alice Cooper. Oh. And uh, Desmond Desmond was producing that, and I was in L.A., and they invited me to come down and sing backgrounds on a, a few songs. And uh, so Alice and I, when I was in Alice, we we did a lot of backgrounds on the Constrictor album together. We did tons of backgrounds on the on Razor Just and Yellow album. And, uh, yeah, I, I met Desmond. He was producing that, and I, I would run into him from, you know, here and there. Um, but we never got a chance to work together. So, yeah, I mean, I've known him forever. I don't know him. I didn't know him, know him, but... Now I know him pretty good. You know, he's he's awesome. Um, very, very intelligent dude. Very interesting to talk to. Super nice. And I can't say enough good things about him. Yeah, I had him on, on my show a while back. He was put He put out a record where he went into a club or something in New York. And all these songs he wrote or co-wrote, he did with a band on piano. And it was really cool. And we talked about everything. We did a really in-depth interview at that time. But you know what I find interesting is that, of course, you know, your band Winger starting out in the mid to late 80s um, and you got to know Desmond prior to you doing your own band when you were in Alice Cooper. I'm surprised that you guys didn't work together sooner and like he didn't work with you at all on any of the initial Winger albums. You know what? I, that is weird. I, well, I didn't know him when we wrote the first album. Um, I met him, at, like I say, I met him on the trash album. I mean, I knew of him, but right. uh, it just, our, our paths never crossed. So I was always a fan. I mean, the guy's amazing. And and on Proud Desperado, what when you say you had uh, the bulk of the song done or what have you, and then he came in, what exactly does he did he contribute to the song versus what you did? Did you say it was just some lyrics, just some some word stuff? Well, it was you know I would have to say you know he contributed tons to the lyrics. He really he really I had a couple words, and he like he goes you know he was he he helped me really shape what the song really was about and everything. I had all the melodies done. That's not to say he hasn't written great melodies because he's I've sat with him and. And he's written, he does it all. I mean, he'll write the music, the words, the melody, everything. In this case, I had the song done, but I was just stumped for words. And, and he came in with these great ideas. It, I had this idea to do something with the word desperado, and it was him that had added on the proud desperado. And uh, just tons of great lines and the meaning of it all. And he really, like, it was amazing to, to witness him be able to, to cut right to the chase and identify the feeling of the tune, like immediately. Did he work on anything else with you on the record? No, no, he didn't. I, you know, I'd love to work with him. I mean, he's, he's fun to play. He's fun to, to write with. I mean, uh, I'd like to sit down with him where we both have an instrument because he's all, he's also got great musical ideas. It's just in this case, the the music part of it was finished when I took it to him. But I mean, the guy, you know, it'd be fun to sit down with a couple of guitars or him on a piano and me on a guitar and like, you know, do something like that. I haven't done tons of co-writing in my career because uh, Reb and I, I've, you know, we were always partners on that. And, and the few partners that I did have, I was really lucky to have because they were, you know, the chemistry was great, but I never got into that like, quote, writing thing where you just write songs for other people and stuff. Cause I've always been too busy, you know, but yeah. Yeah. Um, this song I know goes back because you sent me an early version of this song a long time ago. And I'm, I don't know if you want to say, but you were, you were, you had sent it to me cause you, cause somebody I know you were interested in having do a, a guest spot on it and that didn't really come to be, but this, so this, so I know this song has had been knocking around for a while and was and I and I guess was one of the first songs for the record. Um, the rest of the material came together gradually, and then the full album is coming out. When exactly? What's the release date on it? May fifth. All right, so not that so, far off. May fifth. No, not that far off. We're going to release a couple more songs um, in the meantime, and 
Yeah, so there's 12 songs on the album, and so far, like judging from the comments that we're seeing, you know, exactly my my objective is, has kind of come to pass. It's like I was, I don't know if you know the Pole album. I was kind of looking for something between the first album and the Pole album, and mm -hmm. and uh, it's always hard when you're in a band like this because fans want the sound of the band. And as an artist, you kind of want to push forward. So you don't want to, you can't just do a total 180 on, on, on what the band actually is, you know? So you have to be, you kind of have to fit through this very narrow window and, and not repeat yourself and be boring. Um, push forward into the new, into new territory, but also, you know, have a, have elements of the sound that, people is, is the reason why people liked you, you know? So I find that really challenging. And I think we, I think we nailed it on most of the stuff on this album. Um, be very interested to see what people think of the whole album. Yeah. You sent me it. I haven't had a chance to listen to all of it, but I listened to a couple other tracks and I can genuinely say everything I've listened to so far, I really do like. And, uh, I don't see why the audience w wouldn't be into it either. The lineup that made the record, you know, it's interesting, Kip, and I've, I said this the other day to some people, you guys are one of the only bands, there's like, you can count them on one hand, especially groups from the 80s that have all original members in the band still, uh, plus one with John Roth. What's Who made this record? Did everybody contribute to the record as far as playing on it? They did, yeah. I was very insistent on making this a full band original record, and we we pretty much considered John a, a close to original member because he's been in since '92, and we came out in '88, '89, and uh, and John's kind of a secret weapon because he's he he's got a you know he's got a great voice and he can he can sing all the stuff um, that the background vocals need like you say, we don't use any tape or we don't know tracks or anything like that. So Thank God. I was very, I was very, I was a huge proponent of making sure Paul was back and playing on it. So every, every band member played on every track. So Paul played and, so sang, Paul's, played and sang, by the way. So Paul and John are both on it. Yes. Yeah. And, um, Paul what is actually, the key? Paul actually, Paul played a solo on this album for the first time in in, in the history of the band, because he's actually a great solo guitar player, and uh, he does a solo on a song called "Broken Glass." It's really good, but a great feel. What what is what is the key to like? Why do you think it is like that? You guys have been able to maintain an original lineup when almost every other band out there that came from your era is one, if that in terms of original members, one or two, what, what do you attribute that to? I mean, how have you been able to hold together the original band for all these decades? You know, I just think we're good friends. I mean, that's really what it is. I mean, I, I respect each of the guy's talent and, and I think the chemistry's there and we never had any, we never got in a fight. I mean, we never had any issues uh, legally or friendship, any of that stuff. It was just, we all just got along and uh, everybody's, everybody has fun. It's a very funny band. Everybody's got a great sense of humor. So we like to hang out and have laughs. And, you know, we never got, uh, we never got in, in a, any fights. I mean, we just, we're just good friends. It's, Is, it's um... fun to play on stage with these guys. Is Reb, I mean, nobody really is sure of what the status of Whitesnake is. And for the last, whatever it's been, 20 years, you've shared your lead guitar player and your partner in the band, Reb, with uh, with Whitesnake. We, who knows if they're continuing or not? I mean, it seems like a bit of a gray area right now. So do you think, because uh, I know you ran into some conflicts when Reb had to be with Whitesnake when you had stuff planned or what have you. Does it look like uh, Reb's going to be pretty clear sailing now to be able to be fully uh, committed to to Winger, and you're not going to have to worry about that? It does look like that. Uh, honestly, it does. Yeah, um, 
I noticed David Coverdale cut his hair, so maybe uh, maybe that's an indication. I don't really know, but um, uh, David's a friend, and I but I don't talk to him a lot. Red Red is 100% uh, committed to all the dates we have through the year, so um, I I can't speak for them, but I think you know I think that uh, I think that uh, Rev is back in 100%. Yeah, I mean that had to be as much as you want to support Reb, and that was a great gig for him, and 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 is a great gig. It, it had to be challenging for you though, because you were kind of at the mercy of what they were doing. And I know that you filled some of that space by doing classical stuff and also doing solo acoustic shows. But to be able to know that you can go out full band whenever you want to now, it's got to be a big plus. Yeah, I mean, especially with a new record. Um that uh that was huge and we had planned this before like i say before covid and, and then white snake decided to go out and then they they ended up canceling but um with a new record out it's it's it, it was really critical i i would have actually held the record until i knew reb was available because we had some dates that reb said he could do and then white snake announced they were going out and and it was uh kind of like a farewell tour so to speak and so we had to we we got it we had to get a sub for reb which was the first time we've ever had to do that because we had contracted a bunch of gigs that he had previously said he could do and uh so we went out and, and did it without reb which is something i said i would never do and i don't i don't want to have to do that again although the guy we got jake bond was a super talented dude Filled, you know, filled the shoes really well. Um, I, you know, even though the name of the band is Winger, it's very much a band, and I never, I never wanted to present the band as you know Kip Winger and Winger. It was never that. It was always a band. It was, you know, the the the, the essential members of the band, and I kind of really don't want to do it without them. You know. What is the touring plan going forward? What do you have laid out for the year? We're we're um, doing tons of weekend warrior stuff. We got a Tom Kiefer tour in in July, in June July for a month, which is a full on you know bus tour. We're doing uh, uh, our schedule is like full through September. Uh, excuse me, in May um, we're going with, to the UK with Steel Panther. We're doing six or seven shows in uh, the UK with Steel Panther. That's all. That tour is almost sold out. And uh, uh, like I say, Tom Kiefer, Ju- uh, June, July, we're doing, we're doing, uh, you know, tons of weekends, warrior stuff, more, more like Thursday, Friday, Saturday stuff through, through the end of July. Um, Australia in September, hopefully Japan. And we're looking, we're talking to a few other bands right now about, you know, full on bus tours uh, in the end of the year, the early days right now, but we're, our schedule is, you know, really full up until the end of the year. We've got a few four week periods we're trying to schedule. So uh, I'll be playing nonstop and hoping I can sing it all. <laughs> <laughs> well, from what I heard, you can you're 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 having no problem doing that. But that you know, you bring up an interesting point. I mean, I know Tom, who's another totally real live artist, which I have so much respect for. Uh, Tom goes out there and he does. You know, he doesn't do the weekend fly dates. Uh, he he goes out and plays five six days a week in in a bus. A lot. Most bands don't do that. Most bands, like you said, do the weekend warrior stuff. So it, it's pro, it, it's a little bit of a gear change, right? To be able to go out and tour and actually tour where you're going to play that many times a week. I would imagine that takes a, a little bit more discipline to be able to pull that off every night. Well, it does and it doesn't. I mean, it's really hard to do fly dates. You know, you get in the airport, you do a gig, you fly the next day, do a gig, you fly the next day, do a gig. So, I mean, that's that takes its toll when you can get on the bus and just get in your bunk and drive to the next gig. In a lot of ways, it's way easier. Um, uh, it's just, it takes a lot. It's a whole different mentality, you know? So we haven't done that in a long time. So we're looking forward to doing that. It's, like I say, I mean, in some ways it's a lot easier, but um, you have more gigs during the week. So you got to, you got to pace yourself a little bit more, but yeah, Tom, Tom insists on going out in a, in a, traditional traditional way he only 
you know, I'll play with anyone's bass amp, dude. I'll go out and just plug me in and I'll play anywhere. A lot of bands want to use their own equipment and stuff, and it's largely driven by that. Uh, if you go to wingertheband.com, you can see all the dates. And what's interesting is the first three dates listed on here, which are this weekend, are not winger shows, but ballets. Tell me about that. Oh uh, yeah, as many of you know, I have also have an adjacent classical career. So um, L.A. Ballet is doing my ballet ghosts. Uh, they're doing an evening with Christopher Wielden, who's the guy who choreographed this, who's uh, a very world-renowned choreographer. And so whenever the ballet is performed, I like to show up to see it at least once um, because it's rare. It's a you know it's a rare thing. It's a great honor to have the ballet done by. The ballet companies around the world. So three nights of that in LA and uh, that'll be fun. Yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing that. So you don't perform in it. They're doing music you wrote. Is that what it is? Yeah. I wrote the score, you know, so it's, uh, um, it's orchestra. It's my orchestra music. But you at one point actually performed in the ballet, right? When I was a kid, I was in a company. Yeah, I, uh, that's how I got into classical music. I went into to, to take ballet after karate, and I I, uh, I listened. I heard uh, Stravinsky and, and Ravel and Debussy, and you know all this kind of incredible music. I was like, because I was out playing Led Zeppelin every night with my brothers, and I I got an ear for it, and I was thinking, wow, um, you know just very, very interested in the emotional content and just thinking, wow, I wonder if I could take this one on. I could never really shake it, you know, so I so I was I was uh, spent my a lot of time studying it and, and I've been very lucky with my classical career. I've got a National Symphony did my first symphony last March and they're doing a I'm writing a violin concerto for them now. So um and you can hear my classical album on, you know, on Spotify. It's, it's conversations with Majinski for anybody who's interested. But I'm curious, what inspires you as a kid? Uh, you know, like you said, playing Led Zeppelin, playing in a band with your brother, and all that. Where I understand classical music, I understand uh, ballet being the gateway to getting into classical music. But where, what's the gateway to even being into ballet? Like. What what made what inspired you to want to do that? Like, what did you see or hear? I totally did it on a lark, man. My girlfriend wanted to take ballet. None of her friends would do it with her. She's like, man, none of my girlfriends will take ballet class with me. And I was like, I'll try it because I'd done karate. I was all stretched out. I could get my leg over my head, you know. And I thought, man. And I saw, you know, I, you know, I was a big Jethro Tull fan and Queen, and I was like, you know, Jethro Tull's up there in tights, you know, uh, standing on one foot. I just, uh, yeah, I mean, I just totally was like, you know, why not? Let's try it. And I went in there, man. I, I was like, this is cool, you know, this is really difficult, really. And I started, you know, just really getting into it. She quit, and I, I just kind of went on and, and and did the whole thing, took it all the way you know I, I studied ballet for 20 years you know it was just great when did you stop when did you stop doing it kip do, do you do you not do it anymore i took a class about a year ago so i've been doing it my whole life and if i had time and, and i was near if i was in one place long enough in one time i would i would go still um but and i still do some on my own when i'm at the gym and stuff but it's really just great uh, for your balance and for your muscles. I mean, if you know, like professional football players are well known to do it for balance and all that kind of thing. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, uh, it's just a, it's a cool, it's a cool thing to do, stay in shape and stuff. But last, last class I took was about a year ago. Well, if you're in LA uh, at these ballet shows, you're just there. You're just watching. You're not involved. You're not on the stage or anything. Right. No, and that's that's a, that's a really um, I love it. I love writing the classical music and just putting it in front of the stands, you know, and having a conductor like interpret the music. That's that's a cold other thrill on its own. But uh, yeah, so I mean, I'll just be sitting in the audience watching. 
And the next uh, full-on Winger Rock show is April 15th, and that is in Verona, New York. And then you go uh, St. Charles, Illinois on the 22nd, as you said, scattered dates until you start up with with Tom Kiefer. And again, everybody can find the dates at wingertheband.com. Last thing before I let you go and we play the song, Kip, tell me about the video for Proud Desperado. I thought it was really cool the way it was edited, the way it looked, uh, what was going on in it. Of course, you're no stranger to making huge videos that dominated MTV back in the day. Tell me about doing videos now because it sounds like you want to do one for almost every track on this record. You know what? I I really am a big proponent of the visual component to these these things. I mean, I think it's really important to present the tune visually, and we're we're very happy with the um, you know the songs. And I feel like it would just be kind of a tragedy to if for certain songs to not have a, a visual component. So. I've got six videos in the can. Um, the, the, the Proud Desperado was an interesting one. I, um, you know, the song is kind of about, you know, misguided hopes and dreams that go wrong. And, and I, was, I, I, I was on the treadmill year about, you know, when I first wrote the song and I was working out to the track, like kind of working the song out of my head. And I thought it would be cool to get on a green screen and, 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 sing the song while I'm like walking down the road, you know, and, uh, I've never done any green screen stuff or anything like that. And then we had to hire a guy like Hollywood, a team to like create a 3d set behind me with the bombs and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I was really, when we, when we cut the video, I, I enjoy cutting videos. I mean, I, it, it, it comes pretty naturally and I like, talking about the ideas and talking to the director and getting all that stuff happening. Um, and I think, you know, all you got, you just try to bring it the, as hard as you can. Uh, and I, we actually, it took quite a long time to edit this video to get it right. And, and uh, so far it seems like people dig it. Most of the comments on YouTube are pretty good. So uh, next one's coming out pretty soon. And, and uh, you know, there's uh, five more to follow, at least. Um, I might do even more than that. And it's a hell of a lot cheaper to make them now than it was back in the 80s, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a tenth of the cost. <laughs> you could get you know. great-looking videos on iPhones people are making. What what was the most expensive uh, winger video back in the day? We were never like in the huge money. A lot of people spent a lot more money than we did. Probably one hundred fifty thousand. Yeah. But I mean, I know a lot of guys that spent, you know, three four hundred grand. Um, I mean, I don't know if you've seen that falling in reverse video about. Uh, we can't remember the name of the tune right now. I mean, they must have spent so much money on that. It's the coolest video ever. Right now, I haven't I haven't seen it, but uh, even by today's standards, because of technology you can obviously make them, you know, so much cheaper, you know? So uh, there's totally, just so yeah. much more you can do, obviously. So that's why I remember Bon Jovi put out a record like six, seven years ago. And I talked to John about it. And he's like, yeah, we're going to do a video for every song on the record. I mean, he's Bon Jovi. He can afford to do that. But I was like, man, that's a lot. He's like, no, it's really not. But th the way so many people get their music now, as you know, is through is going to YouTube and and, and watching it. So you might as well have some visual accompaniment if you're going to put all the songs up there anyway. I totally, I, I totally agree. Even if it's just putting your iPhone up and playing, you know, singing it into the, into the thing. I mean, it's, it's, I think the visual, ever since MTV began in the eighties, visual component to a song is, is somewhat essential. I think, I mean, um, in some ways I think it's taken away the old days, like in the seventies. I mean, I, like when I used to sit around and listen to a Led Zeppelin record on vinyl, but vinyl's made a big comeback too. And that experience is still out there. So, um, you know, we were releasing vinyl. Everybody releases vinyl back, back to vinyl. And, and that, that experience is there, but I think the visual component is really important. New winger album is called seven. It's out on May 5th. The first single and video for the song proud desperado is out there right now. And again, the tour dates are at winger, the band.com. 
I'll see you on the cruise coming up soon, man. And uh, we're going to let everybody hear the song now. Thanks for the time. Thanks, Eddie. I'll see you soon, man. Appreciate All right. It. Take care, Kip. See you. There goes everybody. Kip Winger checking in with us here on Trunk Nation, Sirius XM 39. And now, without further ado, this is the brand new single from the upcoming new album from Winger. As you just heard Kip talk about it, this is called Proud Desperado. <laughs> 